Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Craig and I'm a software developer in the UK and in this video we're going to build upon the work we did with divs and spans by learning all about semantic HTML elements. We'll learn what semantic elements are exactly, which elements are considered to be semantic, which new semantic elements were made available with HTML5 and also how we use semantic elements to make our markup more meaningful and descriptive to developers, browsers and screen readers used by the visually impaired. Dividing all of our content up with divs can get a little bit messy and using semantic elements instead is the answer. We're on all of the main social media platforms as everybody is these days so if you'd like to join us on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook or all of them pick your poison and we'd be happy to see you there. The links for all of those are in the description below. If you're finding the content useful please remember to smash the like button and subscribe. We're posting a couple of videos a week so remember to click the bell and get notified when those videos drop. The more engagement that the channel gets then the more YouTube's algorithm will get hold of it and put it in in front of the people that can benefit from the content. So a quick search of the word semantic gives us this definition of relating to meaning in language or logic. Here at Merriam-Webster we have a straightforward definition of the academic field of semantics which tells us that it is the study of meanings. So if we say we have semantic elements, we're simply saying that we have elements that have some meaning. Semantic elements make our websites much more readable and accessible. Accessible being the key word in the sense that web pages can be much more easily interpreted by screen readers that are used by those that have impaired vision. They also better describe meaning to both the browser and to us as developers. Semantic HTML5 helps keep our hundreds and thousands of lines of code organized and easier to maintain. We have of course already seen some elements that could be considered semantic in that the elements clearly define their use and their content. Some examples of semantic elements that we have seen already include the form element and the table element. If we see these, they clearly define their content. Examples of non-semantic elements that we have seen already include divs and spans. And these elements are still great and can be used regularly and extensively. I use them all of the time, but on their own, they tell us absolutely nothing about the content that they contain. Let's look at this for a second. This is Gmail's HTML code written by Google of all companies. And here we have lots and lots and lots of divs. I count divs nested within divs, nested within divs 15 deep. And this is something that provides us actually with no meaning at all. Imagine you get a job with Google tomorrow and you're placed on the Gmail team and your task is to maintain the source code. And if all of the code looks like this, you might have problems because this overuse and nesting of divs throughout a page is a well-known concept in web development called div soup. Div soup is essentially where we are using divs excessively and more often than semantic HTML elements, usually by nesting divs inside of divs inside of divs until you end up like Google have here in the Gmail source code with 15 divs deep. This practice makes websites less accessible due to the content being harder to interpret by screen readers used by the visually impaired, as I said previously. Also, it makes our lives as developers tougher as the code is harder to read and maintain. So I think we've got the idea and we're sold, right? We want our markup to be meaningful and descriptive. In a previous video, we went through and separated out a page of content and divided it into distinct sections using divs and spans. And this is a perfectly fine and acceptable practice. And you can do this, especially with incredibly simple pages like this one. In this case, the comments are helping us to understand what each section is for, and they even help us to understand that these are all different sections of our web page. They don't help out those that are using screen readers, as the HTML comments are not read out by screen readers. So in this example, a better approach would be to provide elements that have some semantic meaning that will make those sections much more identifiable to us as developers and also to screen readers and the browser. Before we actually tackle this task, we need to know what kind of semantic elements are available to us. So let's have a quick look at MDN. And we see here at this link that it gives us an example of some of the many, many semantic elements that are available to us. 
These semantic elements haven't always been around and the ones that we see here were introduced in the latest recommended standard for HTML which we know as HTML5. So if we open nav, main and article, we see that nav says the HTML nav element represents a section of a page whose purpose is to provide navigation links, which is fairly straightforward. Main says that it represents the dominant content and article says that it represents a self-contained composition in a document, page, application or site. Like for example, a forum post, a magazine or newspaper articles or blog entries. We might represent those on a page like so. So we have a rough mock-up here of a standard layout for a simple website that is using semantic elements and this is how we might lay out such a page we have a containing div here that's wrapping all of the content and inside of that we have a navigation section that's marked up using the nav element there's a header section here which represents some introductory content this could be a main banner image a call to action or could even contain some nav links if we like. We could cut this out and pop it inside the header if we wanted to. We then have this main section, which as we read on MDN, will contain the dominant content of our site. So this main element contains two nested elements, a section and an aside. The section element represents a generic standalone section and an aside would be something that's only indirectly related to the document's main content. We could have more links to other blog posts, we could put ads in there, we could have a quote from inside the main content, etc, etc. Inside the section, we have an article element where the main text content could go, like we saw a second ago. Then we just have this footer section, which is self-explanatory, but you could put in here an address, some contact links, a telephone number, a Google map of your business location, some copyright information, or links to FAQs and privacy policies, and things like that that you can read these tags directly in the markup and know more or less about the meaning of all of them instantly is a perfect example of why we say that this is semantic HTML. As I said, using divs is perfectly fine and you can use them and will use them a lot, especially with incredibly simple pages like this one. They're often needed as genuine dividers of content that don't require any specific or explicit meaning. Sometimes your web pages will need a div or two to create some space or structure or to be used for the styling of elements. For example, in the nav elements here, we might want to put a company logo and a set of anchor links. In this case, we could use divs to help keep these two distinct parts within the navigation section separate from each other and it would be perfectly normal and standard practice. Here we're not looking to provide any meaning, we're looking to provide some structure. We'd likely add classes and IDs here, say a class of logo and a class of nav links, for example, and then those classes would be used to target those divs for the purposes of styling and layout. So we would call this presentational markup rather than semantic markup. Presentational markup in the case that we've just seen, where we have a nav that contains two divs, one for a logo and the other for links, are simply there to keep content separate. They're not really providing any meaning to anything, they're just dividing content, which is the intended use of divs. So this is an example of some clean markup that we would commonly use where divs keep content divided and would then be used with classes and IDs for layout and style. We could move the divs around, space them out, add styles to each one and to their children. So I hope this is making sense so far guys. Are you sold on semantic elements yet? If you are, write semantic in the comments or press F to pay respects. Okay, so let's head back to CodePen and the work we did on divs and spans. What we're going to do now is we're going to work through this file and start applying some semantic elements throughout the page in place of the divs. The link to this file is below in the description, so head down there now and get it open in CodePen. 
This exercise is incredibly simple. We're going to find the divs that are separating out our content into distinct sections. And whenever we come across a div, we're gonna take a second to consider what semantic element we might be able to use in place of the div in order to provide more meaning for the content that is within. And once we've decided, we will then replace the div with the semantic element. If you would like a point of reference for the elements that are available to you, you can use the layout that we just looked at as a guide, or you can refer back to the page that we looked at on MDN. Before you get started, don't forget to fork the pen here, which basically will create a copy that you'll be able to save as you make changes to your file. So I'm gonna start at the top of the document and work my way down. And once we've made a change from a div to a semantic element, we're actually going to see a style change on the page, um, just in terms of the colors that are used. I've added all of these to the CSS, so that's nothing that you need to worry about. We're just concentrating on the semantic elements only. So this first one should be quite straightforward. This is quite clearly a section for navigation, so here we're going to be able to use a nav element. If I double click where it says div in the opening tag and then do exactly the same whilst holding command or control on windows, then we're gonna be able to create multiple selections that highlight the div. If I now type nav, it will replace the div with a nav. And just as a visual guide, we see that something has happened. We see that the nav turns green. So that is a good indication to us that we have made a change to a semantic element. Next, we have this large section that has an H1 heading, an image, and a button. And this looks like a page header to me, possibly. And handily, we've also added a comment in the divs and spans video that says header. So this would be a good use of the semantic header element. So I'll follow the same process of double clicking the div and then holding Command or Control on Windows, double clicking again. And now that we have both highlighted, we can type header. And now we have a semantic nav section and a semantic header section. And we can see in our markup how much clearer this is for us to read than the content underneath that is still separated out using divs. Again, just so we know that something has changed on the page, there's been a stylistic change and the header now has this yellowish color scheme going on. Okay, the next section is going to be a little bit different as we have a couple of sections here that we could group together as these make up the main content of the page. We have some main text content that we could probably make good use of the article element for and we have this other information about products. Perhaps we could eventually have this to the side as some more links that go directly to the company's products. So I think it best to take these two sections and wrap them within a semantic main element. And then this about section could be an article and the products list could be wrapped inside an aside element. So I'll cut all of the content by highlighting it and using command or control and X. Then I'll add a main element and I will paste everything back inside of it. Next, we double click the opening div tag and command or control or double click the closing tag as well. Now we're gonna change this to article and then we will repeat this exact same process on the div wrapping the products list and we will have this as an aside element. Okay, so now we have this nice main section that's been built out semantically and it contains a heading and some descriptive text inside an article element and then we have an aside element which we could use to have links going to products eventually rather than the list that we currently have. Next, we have this contact form which in itself the form element is a semantic element as we see it and know exactly what kind of content to expect. However, we have this H3 heading that accompanies the form, and this is the reason why we had to group all of this content in a div, to keep it together separate from everything else on the page. A div might actually be fine in this case, but I think we can go one better, and we will say that this form is a distinct section of our page, so we will use the section element here. Again, we will click in both the opening and closing tags of the wrapping div, 
we will type section and save and just like we've seen with everything else we're going to see a stylistic change to let us know that we've updated the element to one that is semantic. We'll repeat this process for the final div on our page which is right at the bottom and it currently just contains some copyright information. So this is the perfect use case of a footer element. So I will add that in. Okay, so now when we glance through the HTML, we have completely semantic and descriptively laid out markup that will be readable to us and other developers. It will be readable to browsers and it will be suitable for screen readers. Anybody looking over this markup can quite clearly see what each section is for and what kind of content they can expect to be contained within. If I take a quick glance over both the starting and finishing markup comparing the two, it's apparent to me straight away how much more readable the markup is now that we've added semantic elements. In the starting markup, if we remove the comments that we placed above each of the divs, it would be very difficult to grasp any understanding of each section on first glance. We'd have to stop for further inspection. I can now scroll through straight away and see instantly that we have a nav, a header, a main section with an article and an aside and so on. So it's much, much more readable. Okay guys, I think that's a good place to stop. This has been HTML5 semantic elements. And semantic elements give us meaning. They bring understanding to vague HTML files and they help us solve the problem that we saw earlier of div soup. Semantic elements make our web pages much more accessible and more easily interpreted by screen reader software that is used by those with impaired vision. They also make pages more readable to browsers, which is good for SEO and also to us as developers. So this helps us keep our hundreds and thousands of lines of code organized and much easier to maintain. So thanks for watching guys. Remember to subscribe if you're liking the content on the channel so far. We're coming to the end of the HTML section now and in the next videos we will be working on our end of unit project where we're going to build out a full landing page for a burger restaurant. Then we're going to move on to CSS. So if you liked this video hit the thumbs up below and join me in the comments section. Thank you once again for watching, I really do appreciate it and I will see you in the next video.